we're talking about how important it is as an actor to reinvent yourself. That um, I was never a, <laughs> I was never a sex object. Why not? I asked myself. <laughs> I was always the friend, mm. <clears throat> so I started out as a young friend, you know, I was Mickey Rooney. I was, you know, hi Judy, let's do a play, did a lot of those parts, and then I became the friend of the, you know, lead, you know, the assistant district attorney. Um, and you learned to, to adapt to that, you know, sort of thing, and you, got, were you ever an ingenue? I was early, in my early, early 20s, and for a very, very small <laughs> period of time. I can't picture you as an ingenue. I never was that, oh, oh, wow. Will he come back from the war? The sort of Amy Adams will he character, still love which me? Is, she's lovely at that. She's bright eyed and bushy tailed, yeah. but no. June I, Allison, in for the older people who might watch. Yes. But no, I, I always had some darker strokes in me. Yeah. And uh, so I, even if I did play the ingenue or the girlfriend, she was a darker girlfriend. She had substance. She was the one going, come on, Johnny, get back up there and make it happen. You know, she wasn't the, you were suffer, brilliant. Suffer. Yeah. Yeah. No. Swoon, swoon. No, I was never any of those. No, no. so, but knowing who you are is so tricky. Um, you know, I had friends in in L.A., especially where it matters more that you know your type. Mm -hmm. When I signed with my agent, I'm with Commercials Unlimited, which is a wonderful agent. I love my agents dearly. And how many actors say that? Yeah. I've been with that agency for almost 30 years, and uh, better than all Hollywood marriages. And uh, <laughs> when I walked into the office, the head of the agency is a very flamboyant Irish woman, Jewish, actually, uh, many Jews in Ireland, Mayor Briscoe at one point. And she was from Northern Ireland, Sonia Warren Brandon. There was a grandness about Sonia, still is. She's still head of the agency. And I was this scared little kid from Philly with my curly hair, red at the time. And, uh, and I walked in and I thought, an agent? This is a big Hollywood agent. I need an agent. And I walked in and she took one look at me and she said, Tim Conway with hair, sign him. <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> that, yes. Well, that's the way it works. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go through, you know, uh, building your character, and you do the Lear, and you do the Hamlet, you do it, you're working, 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 working. And then you walk in, and somebody says, Tim Conway with hair, sign him. <laughs> All your training. And All your training. It just goes right out the window. Yeah, and she didn't ask me to read. Mm. Didn't ask me to do anything. Okay. And the interesting thing was, you know, and I, I was stage trained and big, you know, big actor, big voice. And um, so I, I go out now, so I have a commercial agent, it's the first agent I get. So I go out on auditions, and I'm not hitting, but at least I'm out there, you know, I'm having fun meeting people, <laughs> don't feel so lonely. Yeah. So I go on this audition, there's a wonderful casting director, Michael Lean, who's one of the best commercial mm -hmm. casting directors in the business. And Michael became a good friend of mine, and, uh, and of my wife, Beatrice Colden, who died. And, uh, Anyway, Michael said to me after an audition, usually there isn't much time, they're rolling you in one after the other. This one day I auditioned and there was nobody waiting, I guess it was the end of the day, and he said, Pat, I think you have talent. Can't tell from your auditions though. <laughs> he said, they're just not very good. He said, but I think you're talented. Mm -hmm. He said, we've got a minute, do you mind? I said, no, I don't mind. He said, Let me, let's take a look at your audition today. So we sat down, the two of us, and because you, you're sitting with an expert uh, casting director and you're watching your audition, and I looked like a guy in the last stages of some very strange African disease. <laughs> I mean, it was just way too big. Yeah. I mean, it looked like St. Vitus dance. I mean, every move was just, my gosh, it was, I was blasting through the television set. So Michael said, you know, you'll never work doing that. I said, no, I, I don't blame God. I'm lucky I'm not arrested. It's lucky they didn't ask me to burn my SAG card. So he said, I said, what should I do, Mike? He said, well, you take some classes. Or he said, what I would do is watch a lot of television. Mm -hmm. Just watch a lot of television. He said, pay a particular attention to the commercials, because he said, you're a good type. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I taped at a little Betamax. I put my money on Betamax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Don't buy any stock tips from me. So I'm watching my, so I tape a lot of shows and I start paying particular attention to the commercials. And there was a commercial actor, and I forget, I actually got to work with him, named Squire Friedel. Oh. 
Wow. He has a, an actual a book out how to make it in commercials. Mm -hmm. He hasn't updated it. I keep bugging him. He at one time was the most successful commercial actor ever. To give you an idea, <clears throat> at the height of my commercial career, I had 17 national commercials on the air. Wow. Now, the average national commercial will make you $7,500 a year. Some make less, okay. some say more. $1,000 or 7500 A year per commercial. Oh, per commercial. Yeah, okay. so if you've got... 17, you're taking 150,000 a year in resids mm -hmm. <clears throat> in a normal year. Now, if something really takes off, you could make, you know, I, I had a Lucky Strike commercial once that made 50 grand mm -hmm. when they weren't even airing it in the United States. Oh. But I was very popular in Beijing, I'm told, <laughs> selling Luckies. So, so uh, anyway, um, Squire, when I did, he was the Toyota spokes for a long time and he was the last of the Ronald McDonald's. And those are all buyouts. And when you do a Ronald McDonald, you know, you, you get a minimum of a hundred grand a year. I mean, for a buyout on something like that. He had forty-six nationals on the air when I worked with him. Forty-six. That's crazy. It is crazy because the reason was he never upstaged the product. Mm -hmm. I was always a little big, and I was always in funny stuff. Mm -hmm. I was always the guy who needed to take Alka Seltzer. I was never the product hero. I can't eat another French fry.